Yeah. Next topic, we guys, we will be, you, you will be dissecting the heart, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the heart, you will be doing that yourself, but as you can see, it's already been cut open, okay, so you can have your heart, this is your liver, alright, and again, it's been slashed, if you want to know why they've been slashed, it's just to check for any diseases, so they take a random sample, cut some open, just to check if there's any parasites, and then, as long as there's no parasites, uh, the butchers know that they are safe to sell, you can actually buy these from the butchers, if you go and ask, for a pluck, they'll, they'll give you a pluck, it's like a pound twenty or something like that, it's not even that expensive. Alright, obviously this topic is gas exchange, so here we have our two lungs, alright, I think this is sheep, is it sheep, you know? yeah. yeah, I think it's sheep, so again, not not that large, but, you know, slightly smaller than your own lungs yourself. What do we have here? Trachea, trachea. alright, now, uh, you can see the trachea leads down, <laughs> what does the trachea then divide into? Bronchi. Two bronchi, one leading to each lung. I will dissect, I will start cutting towards this, so you might be able to see the bronchi. What structure do you think you will not be able to see? Alveolar. 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 Why? Yeah, very, very small. You might see small uh, little dots here. Those are sort of the alveoli. Uh, we'll also cut a bit off and put it into a bit of water. The first thing I want to show you, just cut that section off the trachea. Okay. I will pass this around. Now, the only reason why I'm wearing gloves is because I'm starting to prod and sort of go into these things and it'll get caught under your fingernails and it will smell. And it'll be very, very difficult to get that smell off your hands for the rest of the day. That's the only reason why I'm wearing gloves. You guys do not need to wear gloves unless you want to. All right, as long as you don't start, you know, digging your fingers into it, you haven't got a problem. Go and wash your hands afterwards with antibacterial soap and uh, you're good to go. All right, but if you don't want to touch it, then don't. Okay, but I will leave this here. We'll, we'll sort of spend five minutes passing it around. You guys can come and poke and prod if you want. Yes. What we have here is the trachea. Okay, now on your diagram, you label something about the trachea. What structures did you label along the trachea? It was C shaped cartilage. So, as, um, you won't be able to see it as clearly now, but you can sort of see it's much thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. You can see the cartilage is much thicker towards the bottom. Do you remember why, Thishan, why we said that the cartilage is C shaped? It's not a complete ring, it's C shaped. Not only can you move your neck, there's another reason as well. So, no. It also allows the trachea to compress when food is going past as well. If you had solid rings all the way along, the trachea, the tube, would not be flexible at all. It can't change shape to accommodate anything. So by this cartilage being C-shaped all the way along, it allows your, your trachea to bend and allows it to be squashed, allowing food in the other tube, which is what? The esophagus to go down towards the stomach. All right, so I will pass that around a bit later on. Okay, before I start dissecting the lungs, let's see if we can find the... <laughs> not as much... Not as much as I want it to be. Anyone know what this is? Tom? It is the diaphragm. Normally it is normally a bit bigger, but you can see it's all towards the bottom of the lungs. This is the diaphragm, all right? Very thin muscle, but unbelievably strong. We're just pulling it apart. You guys can try this a bit later on. If you don't try too hard. But, you know, even trying to pull it apart, it's a very, very strong muscle. So what, what is the role of the diaphragm? What is the role of the diaphragm? Jordan? Oh, so you can, uh, you can inhale, which requires energy from respiration. Okay, so it allows you to inhale. But what does the diaphragm do to, the, to, to your thorax, to your chest? It expands the chest, so it allows space for the lungs to expand. Exactly. It basically increases the volume inside of your thorax. By increasing the volume, what happens to the pressure inside of your thorax? Come from this side. Yep. Decreases. Yeah, it decreases. So it allows air to be forced in because the, the atmospheric pressure is much higher than the pressure inside of your chest. So that role is taken by this diaphragm here. Those of you in my class will know this, but anyone know when this involuntarily involuntarily contracts? You just no, those you're in my class. <laughs> when this involuntarily contracts, what does it cause? When you have no control over the contraction of this muscle. <gasps> Hiccups. Right? It's this muscle involuntarily contracting. So in this relaxed state, it is a dome shape. When it contracts, it obviously it causes you to take a, a sudden deep breath, well, a deep breath, a sudden breath in. So it's the involuntary contraction of this muscle. I don't know the exact reason why we hiccup. Do you know? It's not clear. It's not clear, is it? And trying to get rid of it again. There's no proven. Actually, there is one proven mechanism of getting rid of it. No, 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 no. It involves a finger and a hole. <laughs> I am being serious. I am being serious. What hole do you think that is? 
Now, again, supposedly that is meant to be the one known. That is meant to be the one known treatment for getting rid of finger. A finger, not just. There's no point in just sticking it up. You are meant to do something, I can't remember the exact theory behind it, but it's supposedly it works. Roger. Uh, my mum says it, it's good. you get haircuts because you eat too fast. There's a few reasons. Spicy food can do it as well. Yeah, it's quite a few things can cause hair. Alright, anyway, moving, moving back to uh, the lungs. Need a volunteer lead. Because you're disinfecting the end. <laughs> what I'm doing? <laughs> We're in the tube. Uh, who's, who's volunteering? Do you volunteer? No one for this time, Jordan. What I want you to do is hold the tube in the moment. They do it. So, yeah, no, don't breathe in. Don't breathe in. <laughs> now, what I've done, I've put a tube, tube down the trachea. Now, obviously, this tube will not fit into the bronchi because obviously the bronchi divides it to do. So, Jordan is going to breathe out. Please do not breathe in. I'm going to breathe out as hard as you can. Now, what you should be paying attention to is obviously either lung, but also what I want you to do is try and think about what changes are occurring to the lungs when you breathe in, so as hard as you can. Okay? Go. Oh. Thank you. If you want to give it a bit of time, you give it a bit of time. So, what changes did you see? What changes did you see? All right, volume increased. Anyone notice anything else? It changed colour. What did it change to? Cream. It actually turned a much brighter colour. Anyone know why? Why are your lungs? It's, oh. Oh. It's, oh. it's the oxygen. The, the, the blood vessels, there obviously still is some blood here. Those blood is actually becoming slightly oxygenated and it becomes uh, a, a lighter shade of, uh, of red. One more time. <laughs> okay, so there you can see they increased absolutely massively. Now, you would have noticed also Jordan, when he breathed in, he had to expend a huge amount of energy. If you try and think about, you know, breathing in, in this case, inflating the lungs requires energy. What muscles was, was he contracting to inflate these lungs? Or what muscles would contract when you are inhaling? Which ones? Your external intercostal muscles will contract. What other muscle would contract? Your diaphragm. Muscle contraction requires energy. But then as you can see, as soon as he stopped breathing out, what happened to the lungs? I wouldn't say they contracted. They deflated. They returned back to their original shape. He didn't have to put any energy into that. It happened by itself. And again, that's what's going on inside of your own lungs. Right? Breathing in requires energy. Breathing out is just those muscles relaxing and the air leaving on its own accord. No energy is required. But we did talk about when energy was required during exhalation. So that's passive? Uh, yeah, this would be passive. So when did we discuss All right. when exhalation would be would require energy? Passive. Like coughing or sneezing. When you contract certain muscles to force these out. Thank you very much. All right? Now... <laughs> If you guys had covered the heart as well, what we'd also talk about is the connections between the heart and the lung. Because you haven't, got, you haven't covered the structure of the heart yet, I know you guys did it in year eight, it's quite a while ago. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. So you may come back to this model when you guys are dissecting the heart, depends on you know whether we have the resources. Okay? Who comfortable touching? Uh, not really. No, someone else. Someone else. What he's going to do, you can see that these lungs aren't fully deflated. He's going to basically give it a bit of a squeeze, and he'll also you should be able to feel all the air bubbles inside. Just give it, give it a squeeze. You feel anything? All these little air bubbles. All right, I'm going to ask, thank you, that's it, that's it. 
I've drawn him to inflate him one more time. Or someone else. Thank you. I would also pass this around in a moment. Now, I'm going to put this into the beaker of water. What are you expecting to happen? I'm going to put this into this container of water. Any ideas? What do you expect to happen? Bubbles? Anything else? It obviously changes the colour of the water. Do you expect it to float or sink? Sink. No, it's going to float. I knew it. It's going to float. Try and think about what Jordan just did. He inflated the air, he inflated the lungs, sorry. Not all of that air was allowed to escape. And you can see it's now floating. If I give it a squeeze, uh, Mr. Bassett Jones has zoomed in. Hopefully you will be able to see this. I'll push it down a bit. I'll give it a squeeze. You should see air bubbles being released. Yeah. 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 you can see these air bubbles being squeezed, you can see them being released. Okay, we may get a chance to maybe you, you can cut a few more pieces and put it into the water, you know what, I'll let you do that. But that is about it from what I remember. Anything else? I don't think I've missed anything. Yeah, that is about it. Like I said, when you guys are finished, I'm, I'll get you guys to sort of poke and prod if you want. I may try and cut in a bit more detail, you may be able to see the bronchi. Uh, you guys can pass this around if you want, or you can come and look at it at the front. You can see tiny holes. What will those tiny holes be? Can you see the, the hole? Alveoli? They're more likely the bronchioles leading to the alveoli. If you feel the surface, you'll feel that it's not very, very smooth. It's actually quite bumpy. Those are the individual alveoli. But again, they're too small to see. But you should be able to see the bronchioles. Okay, any questions? Uh, if you do want a pair of gloves, you can grab a pair of gloves. I'd recommend just grab one, so you know, you know, you're know you not going to pick up the entire thing.